you to a new school year in St. Paul's, and we open our opening service today with hymn number 478. worship this morning according to the abbreviated service of the word on page 38 in the front of the hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength 
to live according to his will. Our Old Testament scripture lesson for this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So far the Old Testament lesson. And our epistle lesson from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. As for you, continue in the things you have learned and about which you have become convinced. You know from whom you learned them, and that from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, well equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter according to St. Matthew and begins at verse 13. Then some people brought little children to Jesus to have him place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Then Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he left that place. This is the gospel of the Lord. We sing the next hymn number 516. This is the gospel lesson from St. Matthew that you heard a few moments ago in chapter 19 of Matthew's gospel. Then some people brought little children to Jesus to have him place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them, scolded them. 
And Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he left that place. I'm guessing that for many of us, young and old, <laughs> this was one of the first Bible lessons we learn. We are little. We hear a Bible lesson of people bringing their children to Jesus. It was a beautiful picture to start out life with. Jesus' arms wide open, putting his hand on the heads of squirming little children, and saying, really, I love you, and I will love you all the way to the cross. And I have time for you. And I want you to take time for me. And I want to keep company with you throughout your whole life here and throughout all eternity forever in heaven. Now, if that's the signal that was sent to us when we were young, we are blessed. If we think at some point in our life, we have outgrown this little account of Jesus and the children, that now we're too old for that, that's a problem. I know sometimes you reach a certain age, maybe you get to about, what, 10 or 12, and you feel a little <clears throat> awkward anymore singing something like, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, or I am Jesus' little lamb, or away in a manger, and you say, ah, that's for the toddlers, that's for the little kids, I'm too big for all that now, I'm big, I still sing. You never get too old to be God's child. And we all are still God's children. Now, our theme for this school year is let the children come. Oh, little children, yes, but big children too. Three words. I want you to say them after I say them. Ready? You're all awake, right? <laughs> Brought, taught, caught. Brought, taught, caught. Let's listen to what this says here. Then someone... Some people brought little children to Jesus to have him place his hands on them and pray, but his disciples rebuked them. Some people brought their children to Jesus. The timing of this is interesting. I mean, when they did this. These people brought children to Jesus when Jesus was in the middle of a big discussion with his disciples about marriage and marriages busting up and all that nasty stuff. And right into the middle of this really, really heavy discussion, these people interrupt it with a bunch of chattering little children. The very fruit of marriage. The Bible says sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from Him, and when God gives another child uh, to moms and dads, faith and love always smile to set another place at life's table. Children are a blessing. And parents, well, Christian parents understand that even if they take care of all your other needs, teach you how to brush and floss, and make sure that you do your homework, and go to all your sporting events and piano recitals, 
But if they do not bring you to Jesus, they've left you out in the dark and in the cold and all alone and missing the best and most important thing that you need. You are at St. Paul's school this year because somebody brought you and loved you enough to bring you. Because you must be brought. You can't bring yourself. None of us can. In the third article, we learn, I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. And so children need to be brought because they can't bring themselves. Most often, the first time they're brought is here to be baptized. The visible washing away of their sins and adopting them into God's family and you become God's child. But they can lose all of that and that wonderful faith that the Holy Spirit created in their hearts can die of starvation if they are not then taught. The Bible says Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Bible says, and it starts at home, fathers, do not exasperate your children, but bring them up in the nurture and training, the admonition of the Lord. Children need to be taught from God's Word, both at home, school, Sunday school. You are blessed. I hope someday you will look back and you will say, I was more blessed even than I knew then to be surrounded with teachers who not only taught me math and history and English and all that neat stuff, but right in the middle of it they taught me about Jesus my Savior so that I would spend forever in heaven with Him. So they must be brought and they must be taught but you know these parents these people in the Bible story they brought their children to Jesus they did not just send them there's a difference isn't there I can send you somewhere to do something or I can bring you, meaning I can go with you, right? And so it is important to remember that there is an attitude toward God that parents and teachers have to remember. That some things are not just taught, they are, what's the word I'm looking for? Caught. They're caught because little eyes are looking and little ears are listening and they're watching what the big people do and some things are simply caught what means a great deal to me and to your teachers and to your parents will for years to come mean a great deal to you now there's something else Jesus says in the story he says let the little children come to me and do not hinder them because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. The kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. He's looking at the kids. Now some people take that to mean, oh, see, children are automatically members of God's kingdom. They're automatically believers simply because they're children. <laughs> That's not what Jesus is saying. We know, don't we, uh, that even little kids are sinners. Okay? Flesh that is born of flesh is flesh, said Jesus. I was sinful from the time my mother conceived me, said King David. Little kids are cute. Sometimes. But little kids also can uh, <clears throat> scream, break things, say, 
no to mom and dad and get into fights on the playground and plug up the plumbing and do every possible nasty thing you can think of, right? It happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What is the first words that a little child learns to say besides mom and dad? No. That's a sinful nature, isn't it? We all understand that. If I have two small children, toddlers, babies, I put them into a playpen together. I give them one toy. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, it's, the toy's going to get ripped up, and those two kids are... What do you think, Maya? They're, why are they going to be crying? They're going to be fighting. Huh? They haven't even been to a boxing match yet. Maybe they're one year old, but her, her, it's my toy. Oh, that's the second word a child learns besides no. Mine! It's all mine! You don't want to share, right? So when Jesus says the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, like he's, he's not saying little children don't need Jesus' forgiveness. He's saying, look at the way little kids are. You got nothing, right? I mean, you were born into this world with nothing. Um, who do I pick on here? <laughs> Cole, did you buy those clothes? Who bought your clothes? Very good. Slap me five. His mom and dad bought his clothes. We're real happy about that. Your school supplies. Ah. Uh, what do you think, Josh? Did you go out and get a job and buy your own school supply? No. Little kids have nothing. But here's the other thing about little kids, even though they don't have anything, and you got to give them everything. Their clothes, their food. You don't tell the little kid, go out and buy your own diapers. They're also not afraid to ask for everything because they know They've got nothing. They're willing to say, I got nothing. You gotta give it to me. And so they will ask, sometimes they will ask for the whole store. That's why parents sometimes don't like taking kids shopping with them because they ask for everything they see on the shelf. But they know they've got nothing and they're willing to ask for it. The kingdom of heaven belongs to people, young, old who know they have nothing and they need everything and the Savior who says let the children come young old this is the Savior who every day throughout this school year wants to give you all that you need especially the thing that you really need, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Savior, who has said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Regard with thy favor every effort to bring up children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Give, we beseech thee, wisdom and discretion, kindness and perseverance to all who conduct schools for the instruction of the young. Do thou teach them that they may teach others. Grant that the children of our school may receive with a humble, teachable, and ready mind all instruction given them according to thy word. Give them thy grace while they are young, that early seeking thee they may early find thee. Let them remember their Creator in the days of their youth. Teach them to honor their parents and teachers, and to be kind and full of love towards one another. Grant that they may all be trained in the way in which they should go, so that when they are old they may never depart from it. May the knowledge of the Lord be spread abroad, that all may know thee from the least to the greatest, and may praise thee now and forever. Thou who hast taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Following the benediction, the congregation will sing hymn 511. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
Thank you, Pastor Hefty, for our opening service and the beginning of a new school year. Mrs. Manke is with us with kindergarten today. She will be at our preschool and kindergarten teacher. We welcome Miss Lefke to grades one and two this year. Welcome to St. Paul's in Bangor. Mr. Doom with grades three and four. Very fine. Miss Bauer with grades five and six. And seven and eight will are stuck with me for the year, so well, here we go. We are uh, headed back to school uh, to get our orientation done and get used to being in our classrooms. And uh, to begin the new year, the Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day and a, and a decent day to be in school. So that's great. Thank you for all being here. Members of the congregation who are able to be here, thank you. And uh, God's blessings to everyone as we continue in 2018-2019 school.